What's going on, movie goers? So if you're new to the channel, my name is Christian, and welcome to Zero Productions, you guys. So Joker is laughing its way through the entire box office, you guys. It is a huge win, a huge success for Warner Brothers. I mean, Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix, they did a phenomenal masterpiece, artistic, poetic job with this Joker film. I still stand by what I said. It is the greatest movie of the year for me. I've now seen it twice. I plan on seeing it possibly one more time today for my birthday. I do. Tur I turned 28 today, you guys, and I feel old as shit. Damn, I'm too old for this. Leave the weapon. Danny Glove, y'all sh should know. Um, but Joker, pulling in a groundbreaking box office October for opening weekend domestically. Pulling in $93.5 million. Surpassing Venom last year. Venom pulled in $80 million for the month of October for domestic weekend. That is insane. Let me put that in perspective for you. Justice League made 93.8 domestically open weekend. Justice League, the film with a budget of $200 million. Now we're talking Joker. The budget for this film was roughly what? 556, 60 million? Something along those lines. And it's made its budget opening weekend domestically. I'm not even taking accountability worldwide or internationally. Internationally, this film pulled in $140 million. Setting in at $245 million worldwide. That's insane. This film is a huge success. Despite what all these fucking critics have been saying about it being overly violent. Nonsense. This film has always had a targets on its back because it's Joker, because it's a Warner Brothers film, because it's a DC film. And I am so happy and thrilled to see this movie thrive, not only from the fan standpoint, but the box office as well. It is a huge success. And I can't, I, I can't stop thinking about this movie. Like, this movie has always been in the back of my head. I can't stop listening to the score. It, it's, it was just a very impactful film. A reality check on mental illness and I feel like this film is going to be for the record books and be very extremely important for cinema history 30 years from now they're gonna be showing Joker in cinema in cinema classes it's very important and we're talking mental illness a lot of people don't want to talk about mental illness because they're ashamed about it let's be honest with you guys how many people do you call crazy just because they're different a lot a lot and that's the mis that's that that that's the unfortunate part about it. And I feel like this film really touches the elements of mental illness and I feel like it should be talked about more often. Because regardless of the matter is we all struggle with some kind of mental illness. You can't you can't you can't sit and tell me that you've never been through some kind of, you know, sad or depression state. I've gone through it. Majority of everybody has gone through it. Life is a bitch. Life is hard. Life is not always going to be butterflies and cupcakes. It's not. Sometimes it's going to be a pot full of shit, and you're going to have to eat it. That's the, that's the realistic approach to life. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I love about this film so much. It's, it's so grounded. You know, I, I love this film, you guys. I, I, it's just so great. It's so fantastic. And, it, it, and one thing is a bummer for me is that, like, I don't know if they plan on doing a sequel I don't know, like, this This is possibly the last time we see Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker. And that's just like, ugh, it, it hurts. Like, I, his performance was so, so unbelievably well done. And I'm going to be honest with you. I give him a slight edge over Heath Ledger's performance. I do. I still think that this is the best DC film to date since The Dark Knight. But it takes The Dark Knight's performance for me. That's how much I love this movie. That's how much this movie has had an impact on me, cinema-wise. Like, films like this remind me of why I want to become a filmmaker. It really does, you know? And it, fantastic, fantastic work. It really is. Um, but I want to talk about something that I had in the back of my mind. What if Warner Brothers decided to do this DC Black Label, right? With their R-rated greedy shit. And... Focus on the rogues gallery and start their own rogues gallery universe and having Joker be the spark plug to that. 
You know what I mean? That would be intense. We get these these gritty, R-rated, reality-based characters when we're talking DC. Not, not even just DC villains. You can do DC characters as well, you know, in the future. But if they decide to do the rogues gallery, that would be insane. A Mr. Freeze, a Penguin, like a Bane, like all of these phenomenal characters. Mad Hatter, the Riddler. Like I can only imagine how, how great these films could be. Or even I said this on Twitter, One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, fantastic film. What if they did an Arkham Asylum movie and had it sort of like how that film was? incredible that would be so damn amazing i can totally see them doing something like that you know what i mean I, i'm just so moved you guys i'm just so happy about this film like i cannot wait to see it again i cannot wait to purchase this i'm, I'm hoping they release a funko pop because i want to buy a funko pop of you know joaquin phoenix's joker i think it's it's important and i just saw that you know they released the hot toys for it and i'm like oh beautiful those hot toys are expensive but man, you guys, this film, unbelievable. Unbelievable. And let me ask you guys a question. What do you think happened to Zazie Beetz's character, Sophie and her daughter? Do you think the Joker killed them? Because that whole illusion in his head that they were together, was, you know, it was, it was fake. Walked into her apartment. You know, she, she walked out nervous and scared. All he did was turn back and look at her and was like, what do you think happened? And I love the fact that they didn't, they didn't explain anything. They left it up to the audience to have their own creative imagination of what you think Arthur did or what you think he didn't do. That's what I love. That is filmmaking right there. So I personally think he didn't do anything because they didn't harm him. He only harmed and killed people that harmed him or who were mean to him. That's it. And when he walked away from the apartment, it didn't look like he had any ounce of trace of blood or, you know, any kind of struggle or anything like that. I just found that to be quite interesting. And I would like to see you guys, well, hear you guys' take on that certain scene and what you guys think happened. You know, because like I said, the directors and writers, they, they, they left it up for the audience. It's up to us to think what we know, what, what, what we think happened. So please post your comments down below on that. I want to know you guys' thoughts and opinions on that as well. But y'all, man, Joker, huge success at the box office. I think it's going to pull in anywhere between six to seven hundred million dollars worldwide. And that is a huge success of a budget of 55 to 60 million dollars. Phenomenal, you guys. Joker, astonishing. But post your comments down below, you guys. Let me know what you guys think, of, think about Joker killing it at the box office. And where do you place Joaquin Phoenix Joker out of all the Jokers in the past? Post your comments down below, you guys. And thank you for taking time today for watching C-Roll Productions. Peace.